Hey guys, Fallout Lover here, back with another Fallout 76 video, and this one took me a lot longer to make than I thought it would. Sorry about that one, but what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking a look at 79 tips, tricks, and facts about Fallout 76. To kick off our list, we're going to start with the special stats going in order of in which they spell out special. Starting with strength, it will increase your melee slash unarmed damage and also give you 5 carry weight per however much strength you have. So if you have 5 strength, you're going to have 25 extra carry weight. Up next, we have perception. Perception will increase your VATS, accuracy, and your compass range. Up next, we have endurance, and this will affect your disease resistance. You will have 5 points of health per however much you do, exactly in the same increments of strength. And also, you use less AP while sprinting. For each rank of charisma you have, you will get more caps slash XP whenever your teammates complete quests, and for every three points of charisma you have, you can share at least one star of a perk. So if you want to share a five star perk, you're going to need 15 charisma. If you want to share a one star perk, you're going to need only three. Up next, we have intelligence. Intelligence will give you more XP whenever you gain any XP, and you will also get more junk whenever you're scrapping weapons, and this is more apparent when you're using the scrapper perk but it will still affect it even without it. Up next we have Agility. This will give you 5 points of AP per point of Agility, and also you will, just like Endurance, use less AP while sprinting. Last but not least for our special stats, we have Luck, which will increase your critical meter's fill rate. The higher your luck, the faster your critical meter will fill. So, now onto the real stuff. We're gonna start with Anti-Fall Damage. If you have two legs, or just any armor piece, because apparently this can go on other things other than legs, which I don't really understand, but hey, it's Fallout 76, you will take zero fall damage because the game will actually let you stack them, which is kind of odd because usually things only go to 90% in this game, but with no fall damage, the game actually lets you have it. Contrary to popular belief, for newer players, you do not actually need nuclear key codes you just need a nuclear key card. If you have the key codes, the game will not take those from you whenever you launch a nuke, so you actually don't need them. For this next one, I couldn't really get any footage, but that is that Joshua Graham and Dr. Blackburn from Fallout 76 have the exact same voice actor. I bring that up because everyone loves Joshua Graham. He's probably one of the most liked Fallout characters. And Dr. Blackburn, he's actually not a bad character either. Let me have a look. My tribe may take too much pride in its mechanical talents, but in truth, we are intrigued by the workings of a fine firearm. If you are planning on having a terminal around your camp, whether it just be a regular terminal or even the terminal to the Collectron Station, you can lock that. That one actually take, took me a while to figure out. I actually didn't know you could do that one for the longest time. And I don't know if that was a launch feature or that was something that was added later on, but yeah, you could lock terminals. So if you don't want someone checking your stuff, put a lock on it. This next one is actually quite a big deal because it actually affects your gameplay the most. Or at least out of the quests that uh, you can complete, it will affect your gameplay the most. If you do the quest mayor for the day in Watoga, you will actually have an ability of where the robots don't attack you no more. Because if you have not completed this quest, every robot will shoot you on sight. But if you do this quest, they won't attack you. So it makes traveling through Watoga way easier. And it's actually one I recommend doing. If you want a little bit of a challenge, there is this part at the end where you have to go on the roof of a building, and that one can actually be quite difficult, but other than that part, definitely a quest worth doing. If you head on over to the White Springs Golf Course and go a little bit to the east, you can find something called a Sulfur Water Fountain. If you drink from this, it will cure you of every disease that you currently have. Another feature that I just didn't actually know for the longest time is that you can actually unlock the bayonet for the black powder rifle. Now the way you unlock this is kind of weird and you have to scrap a black powder rifle that already has the bayonet on it. So if you have a friend that has it unlocked or if you find the mod for it out in the wild, which I don't want to say it's really common, I didn't really know it existed until I found it and I'm like, no, oh, okay, that exists. But if you scrap a black powder rifle with the bayonet on it, it will have a 20% chance of dropping it. Some helmets in Fallout 76, including, in this example I am doing, 
the Secret Service Helmet, and of course there are a few other ones like the Minor Helmet or the Minor Headlamp. Those ones can also change your headlamp's color. So instead of coming out of your Pip-Boy, the light will come from your helmet. If you craft an Assaultron helmet or you just get one from a quest or find one out in the wild, this helmet is pretty interesting. If you have your gun put away, it will have open face plates, but as soon as you pull your gun out, the face plates will close. That's a pretty cool mechanic, and I really hope we get more helmets like that in the future where they're actually interactive because it just makes them that more special. If you open up your Pip Boy, you will have the option to change it to the Quick Boy, and it's basically a clear Pip Boy that just makes the game a little bit easier to play, as while the Quick Boy is up, you're actually able to reload while checking your inventory, which if you're using a gun like the Black Powder Weapons, and you got a long reload, but you still want to use a stim pack from your inventory, it's pretty snazzy. After drinking a mutation serum in Fallout 76, you will not actually receive the negatives of that mutation for the first hour that it is active. So if you're just really rich and you want to craft a bunch of serums, you can drink these over and over again to basically give your mutations no downsides. I wouldn't really recommend it as it will take a lot of flux, but like I said, if you're rich and you can't afford it, well, hey, no downsides for you. The next thing we're going to be talking about is legendary perks. You can get your first one at level 50, second one at 75, third one at level 100, fourth one at 150, fifth one at 200, and you get your final one at level 300. Carrying off of our previous point of the legendary perks, if you have a maxed out character, or it really just reads off of your highest level character, you can actually carry your legendary perk slots over to a new character. So if you are having a character that is over level 300 and you start a new character, that character will actually have all six perk slots already unlocked. If you're feeling like you'd like to take a little bit of a dip into the lore side, the entire region known as the Mire was created by the Gek exploding in Vault 94 because some dumb raider shot it not knowing what exactly it was. And if you have not played Fallout 2 or Fallout 3, you probably wouldn't know what a Gek is either, to be honest, so I wouldn't say they have the right intentions because it created the whole region, but a little Fallout fact for you. For our next Fallout tip, this is a bit of a simple one. If you holster your gun right as you fall, or if you draw your weapon right as you fall, right before you hit the ground, it will actually cancel your fall, so that way you don't have to be stuck on that little falling stun animation. I use this one all the time because I really just don't want to hit the ground with that much impact. I mean, I don't take fall damage, so I mean, it's not like my character's feeling anything. For our first of the settings that we're going to be taking a look at today, spoiler alert, we will figure out more. You can change the color of your Quick Boy and your Pip Boy using the slider menus in the display section of your settings. Pretty simple. Just choose your favorite color and simple as that. The next one I'd have to say is based off of the previous one in a way. Your flashlight is actually also the same color of your Pip-Boy, but not the Quick-Boy. So if you have the Quick-Boy, and you want that a different color than the Pip-Boy, you can actually just have your Pip-Boy as basically just a flashlight color, and your Quick-Boy as your whatever color you like. Up next for our replayers of Fallout 76, or people who just really don't care about the main story, you can actually skip most quest lines in Fallout 76. So the way the main quest line usually works is you have a few different change. So you got your responders, your Raiders, Free States, Brotherhood of Steel, and your Enclave, but you can skip specifically to whichever of those factions that you like, skipping all of the previous ones, and you only technically have to go through the Enclave one to actually launch a nuke to finish the main quest line. so you could actually technically avoid, like, mm, I'd say at least roughly 80% of the game. Whenever you inspect weapons in Fallout 76, you will have the option to rename them, so if you have two fixers and you have them well, since whenever you have a legendary fixer, it doesn't actually rename it, you can just rename it yourself to organize that gun, or if you just have a name you would like to call your gun, you can rename them that way as well. Whenever a region is in its verdant season, whenever you harvest a plant, you have a chance to get double the yield when harvesting. For you controller players out there who are tired of using your thumbsticks to drag the bar, all you have to do is use the bumpers or triggers if you want to go faster, Bumpers go in 1 20th, whereas the triggers go in 1 4th. Hey, 
if you head to the little tri intersection beneath the Kanawa Nuka Cola plant, you can find a house with a very dapper looking rat roach sitting on a toilet. As you walk around the Appalachian Wastes, you might actually see these things called Porta Diners, and they have these little pies in them which a lot of players assume that you can't actually get, but in reality you can. It's a very low chance, but you are actually able to get the pies from the machine. Or alternatively, for our next little trick, if you would like to just skip that, you can go to the roof of West Tech, and you could just get one for free. In the underground location known as the Deep, you can see this weird looking creature called the Visitor. For our next little trick, which doesn't really work as well as I wish it did, but it's still something you can technically do nonetheless, if you have daily quests in your Pip-Boy, you can actually reject them so that they're not taking up half of your screen. Which is a good thing, but they come back the next day or just whenever they feel like resetting, so they're just gonna come back after like a few hours anyways so it's a good feature and i hope that that might get fixed in the future so that way if you reject them they actually don't instantly pop right back up but if you want to go a few hours without looking at all these daily quests in your pip boy you can technically reject them another little minor one for our vats users the sweet water special blend is technically an alcohol which is weird because well it's it's a tea an alcoholic tea, which gives two perception, but if you use the perk party boy or party girl, depending on your gender, you can get that tripled to six. Having six extra perception can actually help out a decent chunk when you're using vats. With the next little trick I have to show you, it's not really one I could have easily gotten gameplay footage for, but if you are not on a team with another player, you can crouch, and you will not show up on anyone else's map. Of course, if you're on the same team as someone, yes, you will show up on their maps, but if you are not on the same team as someone, and they are crouched or you are crouched, you cannot see them or they cannot see you. If you power up any power plants in Appalachia, you will actually be able to power up nearby workstations, which will, in turn, just give you free power, so that way you can actually not have to build power if you take these over. You are able to display two of the same item in different workshops. For example, if you have a camp on the surface and a shelter, you can actually display the same item in both of those display cases. Now you can't have the same item in two of the same display cases at the same place, but if it's in a different um, interior slash instance, you can have the same item in different display cases. Up next, I have a bit of a triple fact for you, and that is, Whenever you nuke an area, there is a chance that any ores will become ultrasite. The next one is nuked plants usually stay nuked even after the nuke goes away. And the last one is nukes will last roughly about two hours. Just in case you went this long without actually knowing, you will gain attachments for weapons from actually just scrapping them. Same thing goes with armor. This, however, does not work with power armor. You do have to find those plants out in the wild. But, when it comes to weapons and armor, you can just get attachments from scrapping them. If you go to the top of any lookout towers around the map, you can actually survey the area and it will mark any non-discovered locations in grey, so that way you can easily go find them later if you want to explore them. Similar to the visitor that you can find in the deep, you can also find something called the interloper at the bottom of the lucky hole mine.
Something to keep a note of while you're fighting blood eagles is if there is a nearby siren and you are detected, sometimes some blood eagles will just run over and slap the button, which will call for reinforcements. To my knowledge, there is a very overlooked feature in Fallout 76, and that is you can invite players to your team while you're both in the main menu. One of the biggest takeaways from this video, in my personal opinion, is that you can actually server hop the purveyor if you want to buy more vault steel or more legendary modules. Now, I didn't know this one for the longest time when I found it out. That was the biggest facepalm ever did. And honestly, I don't know why you just can't buy more. I don't know why there's like a, a server limit, but there is, and if you server hop, well, you could just go buy more, so I did just taking longer to do something that really, you could just do a little bit easier if they increased the amount you could buy, but you can still do it nonetheless, and this is a very good takeaway, so if you want to get a lot more than you thought you could get, well, you can get more. Just like with Fallout New Vegas, some of the more recent guns here in Fallout 76 that are unique actually have a unique paint job compared to the original gun itself, which is actually really cool. Props to Bethesda for that one, I actually give them a gold star on that one. The higher your intelligence when crafting a weapon will actually affect its durability after it's crafted. So if you craft weapons with lower intelligence, they're gonna have less durability, but if you craft them with higher intelligence, they're gonna have more durability. One of my personal favorites is the power armor HUD adjustment. So, as you can see, there's this very clunky HUD that you get whenever you wear power armor. But if you go back to your good old friend, the settings mode, you're able to change that to where it's not actually a big bulky HUD. And that's personally one of my favorites because playing this without the power armor HUD is just so much cleaner and it takes up less space on the screen. So if you don't mind getting rid of that little bit of an extra tanky looking first person, Trust me, this view is worth it. With my next little trick, I guess, I'm going to spice it up with a fun one, and that is, if you take a flinger and combine it with a jetpack, you can kind of just go as far as you want in one direction pretty fast. Now, this does actually cause some stability issues and makes the game kind of break, but if you just want to have a bit of fun making the game freak out for a bit, it's kind of funny. For this next trick, it's kind of one that the game doesn't really tell you about, but... For the most part, not every companion slash ally, whatever you want to call them, while they don't all have one, most of them will actually give you a unique perk or little boost you can use to affect your gameplay a little bit. If you go south of Somerville and find a bench overlooking the dry lake, you can find a unique item known as the Old Ring. This is the only spot in the game where you can get this item, and it's actually fairly hidden because you have to pick up a hat to see it. For this next trick, uh, you can use floater grenades to actually harm enemies through walls. And I really hope in the future this is expanded upon with future grenades because being able to hit enemies through walls is actually pretty unique as that's not really something you can do in this game. Next up we have quite a useful one and that is every single red rocket in Appalachia is guaranteed to have at least one stash box. These next two tips are a bit similar, and this first one that I'm going to show you is that you can actually shoot off both legs of fair ghouls, or at least somewhat, it doesn't actually look like his legs are around, but you can shoot off both of his legs to make him unable to fight. Similarly, if you shoot off both of the arms on any robot, and this works with every robot, 
they will automatically initiate self-destruct, giving you an easy win. Later on in the main questline, or if you would prefer to just buy it from one of the moduses in the White Springs bunker, you can get something called the Missile Silo State Holotape, and this thing is a lifesaver. What it does is basically will tell you whether or not a nuke can be launched from certain silos on a given server. And this is a very handy tool if you launch a lot of nukes. For our next little tip slash fact of the day, you don't actually use durability on your gun unless you actually hit a target. If you shoot like a thousand rounds into the sky, your gun will take no damage. But as soon as you hit an enemy, it will. For another bit of a little bit of a lore lesson for you guys, the Snallagaster slash Grafton monster are both FEV creatures. I didn't actually know this one for a while, and that was actually a pretty cool thing to find out. For all of you builders out there who didn't quite know exactly how big the camp radius is, it is roughly about four building walls, I guess, high, and about four building walls down. Back over in good old friend the settings, you can actually toggle between damage numbers on or off. Of course, I have them on, usually when I play, because I just like to see how much damage I'm doing. But if you play with them off, or if you would prefer to have them off, that is toggleable in the settings. Some train stations around Appalachia will actually give you little tiny secret hidden quests which aren't really alluded to. Only those with a keen eye can notice some notes pinned to the walls. For those of you out there who own the Imposter Sheep Squatch head laser gun, it actually has a unique sound compared to the original Assaultron head. For this next little trick, not gonna lie, it's kind of one I actually forget you can do from time to time, and that is, you can buy gold bullion over at the Wayward from a guy named Smiley. You can come right over, friend. Avail yourself of my genuine gold bullion. <laughs> of course you are. You've just made my day. Now, here, let me make yours. If you head on over to the Ohio River Adventures, there is an additional unmarked daily quest which you can do to increase your raider reputation by giving them anything that has to relate to Mirelurks, whether it be Mirelurk meat, Softshell Mirelurk meat, Mirelurk eggs, or Mirelurk queen meat. What? Always good to see you. It means more caps are headed our way. Good. What have you brought in for us today? If you head on over to the Seneca Rocks, you might notice that there is something pinned to the side of the mountain. This is in fact the original concept of what the Scorch Beast was supposed to be. A vulture. Now of course that ended up getting cut and the final one is actually a bat. But originally, the Scorch Beast was intended to be a vulture and this is basically a bit of a leftover texture. If you use the perk Power User, it will also increase the amount of ammo you have in your clip while using the Gatling Laser or the Ultrasight Gatling Laser. Normally, Initiate Dodge is found over at Watoga, but if you have enough strength, you can convince Initiate Dodge to return back to Fort Atlas. A couple of those big green dummies myself. I haven't gotten to tussle with one of them yet. Thanks. Keep working your ass off on those daily ops, and maybe I'll throw a set your way. Now, just so you know, 
The eye patch isn't included. Any instanced interior, which is specifically designed to be catered towards that specific player, will have pretty much a respawn rate of roughly about a minute to a minute and a half. Meaning, if you really want to, you could clear a place out, go do like a little small daily quest or something, and then come back, and it'll be completely reset. In terms of enemies, not the loot. The loot will respawn separately, but the enemies themselves will respawn really fast. And with areas like West Tech, where it spawns primarily super mutants, which super mutants are some of the best forms of XP, you can grind quite a bit of XP if you loop around West Tech over and over again. Vault 51 for the longest time was only accessible in the game mode Nuclear Winter, which was actually recently taken out of the game. Now if you have not played Fallout 76 since Nuclear Winter's departure, you might not actually know that you can actually enter it now in the base game. And it's a pretty interesting location and I really recommend that if you have not been there, I strongly recommend you check it out, it's a very interesting location. If you find yourself over by Haven Church and you head on up to the roof, you may have a chance to see what is probably one of the more rarer creatures in the game, with this being one of its only few spawn locations. If you are not quite sure what the difference between armor and power armor is, power armor actually has a unique uh, effect, let's say, which gives you 7% bullet reduction, or just any damage reduction, per piece. So if you have a full set of power armor, you will actually get a flat 42% damage deduction, which is way better than most armors, because most armors use damage resistance, which isn't actually really good of a feature and probably should be changed, but... I don't see that happening anytime soon, so if you really want to be armored up, definitely want to go power armor. For the Tesla rifle fans out there, a little nice thing you can do is you can put on the Grenadier perk. Now while this gun is not actually an explosive weapon, Grenadier will double the range that the ARC has, therefore you can actually hit targets from further away. After a server hits roughly about 10 hours, it will automatically shut down and will not allow anyone else to join unless they join you from your friends list which, after enough people leave, you can basically get yourself pretty much a free private server. For those of you out there who like to use bats, there are actually attachments you can put on your guns which are suited specifically for that. If you put a aligned barrel, forceful stock, swift magazine, or a reflex sight on any of your guns, except for the energy weapons, I believe those ones work a bit different, but with the ballistics, if you put that combination of attachments on your gun, it will actually take sev like a lot less bats in bats, so you can actually shoot a lot of bullets at your enemies without being kicked out of that, which is always fun because some guns kind of kick you out instantly because they take a lot. For our last setting of the day, and that is you can toggle backpack visibility on or off, so if you're someone who likes to wear dresses or just outfits that don't really have backpacks that go with them, well, you could just turn the visibility off, and you or other players will no longer be able to actually see it which will allow you to have some nicer outfit choices. If you pay very close attention to Fallout 76, you might notice some assets actually look very familiar to ones in previous games, and that is in fact due to because a lot of the assets in Fallout 76 are actually really similar, if not carbon copies, of things you've seen in older games. Now the thing that I'm showcasing here, the industrial hand, 
was actually a weapon from Fallout New Vegas' Lonesome Road DLC, and there's a lot of others like this, such as the Brotherhood of Steel bunker that you could see in Fallout 1 is actually something you could build as a prefab in this game, and there's a lot of others, and I thought about making a separate video on that, and if you would like to see a video going over a lot of different assets that Fallout 76 uses from other games, let me know. A cool little thing you can do is you can put a shredder barrel on the front of a minigun, and if you have zero 5mm round in your inventory, you can actually use the minigun basically as a chainsaw, and I recommend you try it because it does quite a bit of damage. Like, you can really shred through enemies with this thing. Last but not least, our 79th fact of the day is Vault 79 is called Vault 79 because that is the atomic number for gold. That is about it for today's video. I hope you learned something from one of these 79 tips, tricks, or facts. If not, I apologize, but if you have, that is good. We all like to learn new things, especially about the games that we play. And with that being said, I would like to wish all of you guys a wonderful evening, and I hope all of you guys have a wonderful day.